NFL owners meetings began this morning in Orlando. They've made some rule changes immediately. There's going to be an additional vote tomorrow. The XFL kickoff rule has yet to be voted on. It might be voted tomorrow by the owners in Orlando, or it might be pushed back to the May meeting. This rule comes from the XFL, the Spring League. It was an experiment there. They seem to like it. This is all about preventing the collisions, the high-speed impact, the injuries on kickoff returns. What they're proposing is John's going to kick off to me. John's going to kick from his own 35. But his kick cover guys are going to line up at my 40. My blockers on the return team are going to line up at my 35. Your guys, my guys, are frozen. They can't move. The guy kicks it off. My guy in the end zone goes to return it. Nobody can move at the line of scrimmages until the ball is actually caught and the return begins. And what they're going to try to do is stop these gunners coming down at 100 miles an hour and the violent collisions and guys flying through the air and knee injuries and all that. They have yet to approve it. There's a lot of dialogue about it. Some think it's way too absurd to change the game. Others say we've got to change the game. There are more injuries on kick and punt returns than there are any other fa any other facet of the game. Uh, that has been delayed. They did reject the 4th and 20 rule. Now, this 4th and 20 rule was proposed by the Eagles to replace an onside kick. It'd be a 4th and 20 play, and if you made the 4th and 20 play, it's like you recovered an onside kick and you continue the possession down the field. They said that's too too radical, too absurd. They're not going to do that. They did impose the ban on the hip drop tackle. A lot of injuries this past year. There were 230 incidents in, in their survey, all the film work of all the hits in football, 230 hip drop tackles. There were 15 catastrophic injuries by virtue of the hip drop. Now, It'll be a 15-yard penalty if you make that kind of play. It will be reviewed after Sunday, and the player that does it could get a significant fine. It's kind of been, been packaged like helmet hits. You hit me with your helmet. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a flag. Maybe there's not a flag. But it's going to be reviewed on Monday at the league office, and you could get a $25,000 fine, depending on the violence of the hit. So if there's somebody involved with a hip-drop tackle, Maybe maybe there isn't a flag, or maybe there is a flag. It's going to be reviewed Monday. The guy who does the hip drop tackle can get fined in addition to the 15-yard penalty. Uh, they're also done doing something different. We have a replay assistant in the booth. He's going to be on communication headset with the head referee. And if there is a questionable mistake hit to the helmet of a quarterback, quarterback scrambling over the line of scrimmage, if there is a grounding play that's not called correctly the replay guy in the booth can message down to the referee hold it we're going to review and the referee can either pick up the flag if there was a non-helmet hit or he can throw a late flag if there was a, a late helmet hit mm. so they're using replay from a safety factor on a couple of other things so those that's the first group of rules that were passed rejected and tabled uh, in the early monday sessions in orlando well, I, I like the rules if they're going to, you know, get it right. I like seeing them get the play right and also protecting the player. So that's all sounds good. I want to go back, though, to the kickoff. I'm trying to imagine in my mind because we have kickoffs and we have punts, which are different. But in a kickoff, the the kickoff kicker is going to still be in the same location. 35 yard line. You're 35 kicking to me in my end zone. But he'll be out there on an island all by himself because the two lines are um, like only five yards apart, right? And they can't move. They're frozen until the ball's put in play. So the receiving team are going to have all their linemen like looking over their shoulder, like seeing when the guy's going to catch the ball. Yeah. Um, so it's an interesting way. For, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't be opposed to just banning the kickoff entirely because 99 times out of 100, it's kicked into the end zone, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but what about punts? Are they going to do anything changing the punts? Because nope. you could still have those dudes on the on the outside, the gunners, and that's still going to happen. Right? But that's different than having one gunner or two gunners on the outside who can get blocked on the periphery mm -hmm. than having 10 guys going downfield <laughs> yeah. like a freight train. Yeah, that is something. It's amazing. They still allow that. Yeah, 25% of all the major injuries in the NFL last season came on kickoff or punt returns. Oh, I believe it. You know, if, if it's not trying to go after the receiver, it's all the guys blocking. I mean, it's it's a head-on train wreck. Okay, NFL fans, join us on Fans Forum. 
Should we take the kickoff return out of the game just because of the injury factor more than anything else? Feel free to give us an opinion. Let's